Hello, everyone. This is Sirius Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our legendary Sun Quan Tribute Modded Campaign. We continue for episode three from turn five in the harvest season of 208. And last time we started our sneak attack in the south. We're focusing on Zhengjiang first. We're clearing out our threat from the rear. Uh, we finished the fight here with just delegate rushing uh, a lot of mercenary infantry for this fight. Three vanguards because we have so many of them. And Huang Gai picked up a level. We'll pick up Flame of the Phoenix here. And this army will continue its way to attack the other locations because she's currently not defending them. I think we can cut down the size of this army looking at... You know, the potential threat that we'll end up fighting, it's not that scary. And the garrisons here... Mm, I mean, we can probably reduce it down to two stacks. The upkeep on these units are actually quite high. Um, I think this has to do with a certain factor of upkeep increase due to our support level. So if we think about it this way, we're not going to be able to attack this place for at least another... I mean, this turn, another turn, and another turn, right, in terms of moving the army up. So I actually think this is a mass disband moment. This recruiting one is only 400. The upkeep, like if we don't use it for two turns, it's better to recruit them fresh. There is no experience loss on these because, you know, we have the seven rank for free. OK, I got to click that off. That's going to be super annoying. Oh my god, I thought I clicked it off. Now that's weird. Okay, there we go. Yeah, they still don't have a mass disband button, unfortunately. And looking at the way the territories are divided, for us to recruit units against that, I actually think this army can be disbanded as well. We can have this army do the fighting for us. Um, basically, we can walk up to the borders right here, I think. We activate them. Right, looking at the path, we can go all the way to here. That would still be a Sun Ben's territory. Right here, that's our territory. Uh, we can be here. They can't attack us, and plus we can ambush here. We can recruit next turn, or maybe whenever we do want to attack, and we attack from this direction instead, instead of having them loop around. It's just wasting money. Um, they did well. We can disband this group as well. It's just the upkeep ratio, especially with... You know, us having access to mercenary units, it just works better for us this way. Likewise, we want to take out Guangling. And what we're going to do... Well, Dong, Donghai has a piece that we could take as well. But Zanba is also at war with us. So we might bump into some new factions. I'm also debating whether we want to launch the siege. It's almost impossible for us to take the city. In this fight, uh, there's a couple factors against us. He has a tribuchet. There is a defensive military infrastructure building, so there's going to be tribuchets as well as multi-bolt crossbows on the wall in the bastions. We can kind of kite away from that with our deployment, but they have a double stack here and they have a full stack here. It's not really going to work out for us with a direct siege. I think we're better off Pulling an ambush attack closer to the city to get at least the garrison to help us out. It's not a very good garrison, and they could very likely have night battle. I don't know their actual level, but I imagine it wouldn't be quite low. Both of them have access potentially as sentinels to night battle, which will pull away the defensive units. We might consider just going for a full recruit if we think they can launch the potential attack against us. It doesn't look like they can trigger the ambush. They don't. I don't think they will walk close enough, but um, definitely something we can consider. Or else we can use the movement trick to get an army to move against these locations. Now, looking at it, it's a walled city, so we actually need a strategist with tribuchets for this northern attack that we're planning to launch. 
I don't want to walk through the forest. This is really slow movement. I think it's better if we go into Donghai. Even if we turn, it's better than going this way. Regardless, I think we need a strategist. We could just wait for the other, the generals we just used to come back, because Huang Gai and Pan Zhang are great choices. Now, Hu Chu, are, I, I kind of want him as a character. I think what we can do with him is we wait. He's probably going to stay in our recruitment pool for a little bit longer. We wait until Zheng Jiang's about to be destroyed. We recruit him, wipe out her faction. So even if he is a spy, he wouldn't be able to do anything to us. That's the idea. Yeah, I think we move him to the borders, then recruit, then seize. This turn, he's just going to get the tribuches out and start replenishing them. So that we can set up an army that direction. Um, we will give them an army. I think we can afford the whole thing. Barely. Yep, barely. Which is a good thing. Oh no, we don't have the reform for tier 5, so we actually will not be able to build anything in our main capital, unfortunately. But elsewhere, free buildings galore. Danyang. Yeah, we want a private workshop. Barely short. Maybe Diplomacy will bail us out again. There is a growing list of factions. Oh yes, there is a growing list of factions that's willing to sign on aggression. I'm okay with not expanding that way. We have vassals in between us, so I don't think it will be anything. Hmm. These don't look promising either way. I don't think I can get 1,200 from him. I can. I can justify taking cash. Perfect. I'm just going to take a quick look to see if anyone has any ridiculously high value. Yeah, we want to sign this early. I think the expansion stops. I want to focus north. I want to wipe out Tal Tal as early as possible so we don't have to deal with his nonsense. Close enough. See if we can get 900 from him. Nope. I mean, it's not really fair because this is not exactly going to be 900, but it's close. Unsway? Well, that's far. I can't imagine us ever going to war. Zhang Lu, same thing. He's actually pretty wealthy. But not super generous. Shi Xie. We'll try to follow the historical footsteps of vassalizing him. Although I imagine with how the game has him set up with so many vassals of his own, he might feel too strong about himself to really become our vassal. We'll give it a shot. Tao Ren? See, that deal feels weird. These are all vassals of Tao Tao. It's kind of weird that, you know, we are we start out at war with Zhang Liao already, who is a vassal of Tao Tao. Which apparently doesn't drag everyone in because it's like an exist existing war. Should I wait for his trend to go up? No, it's already over 60. That's actually pretty Yo. high. I think we're good. I don't think there's anyone with super high value. Three point some. Ooh, 
I lied. There's technically two. Shixie and Song Jian. Song Jian's very far. Western faction. In a poor place, though. You were rich, but you were not super generous with us. It's improved. What happened to you? Technically, if we, if we wait here, once it goes above 60, this value is going to skyrocket to about like 10 point something. Let's wait for that, actually. <laughs> Zhang Xiang had enough after one fight. Since she's a bandit subculture, we cannot actually annex her, so there's no need to keep her alive. I'm not going to build up Guangling. I feel like Guangling is going to be one of those commanderies that we gift away to a vassal to be a buffer state here in the north. It's not lucrative enough to really keep. And we have a bunch of cousins that I don't want to deal with. They're not that useful. I feel bad firing them. So we'll probably just give them a piece of land and be our vassal. I think that sums it up for us. We do have a bit of extra points. They're not willing to be a spy for us. So I might just kick Lu Meng out and hopefully he bounced into our pool. Um, Ling Tong will just leave, right? If we use this on him. And then we can technically absorb the faction after that. So he's going to be gone. Might as well empower trade before then. Use up his points. Plus eight, that wouldn't work. So we're done. Yeah. So because he's our spy, Ling Tong will just come back to us, be our first champion, actually. That's very nice. And Lu Meng will go into someone's recruitment pool. No idea who. And we'll just try to absorb uh, Zhou Yu after that. I think that's it. Let us... Uh, we could also consider using our intrigue points. I think we're dipping because someone talked trash about us. Um, we could try to increase our own favor. It will cost us 5 to increase by 15, which I think is probably what we want. Yeah, we want to stay in a nice spot for the satisfaction boost, corruption reduction, diplomatic favors. And I think that that would be it. Let's see if John L falls into this trap. We might be too far south. He might not be able to reach us, but we'll see. I actually don't prefer ambush fight. If he can just walk here and we do an open field fight, I'm down for that. He has money now. Can I get everything? Close. Close to everything. Hmm. I feel like we kill him after we take out John L. So a temporary piece, you know, five, ten turns before we tear up the treaty. Doesn't really hurt us. Plus, our untrustworthiness are going to skyrocket the moment we annex Zhou Yu. Liu Bei also likes this. I mean, Liu Bei is like our best friend right now, so... Zhang Lao didn't come. Yuan Shan's destroyed. We don't have to pay him food anymore. So we got our eight food back. Ling Tong comes back to us. Another Xiong Lu character. Oh, Wu Huan character probably if he was with Yuan Shang. He's safe to recruit because he's fa his former faction's dead. Wonder if he has any items. We'll take a look. Wen Qing. Um. Eventually he will be with us for a period, but he's 
technically Cao Cao's general. He's, he's, okay, so I don't know if we should trust him. Yeah, I think he's a safe recruit. With a gold weapon, we should definitely welcome him in, even though he's just another vanguard to the list. I think he's worth... Yeah, also interesting skill tree with the nomadic factions. As you can see, our you know family support's ready all the way maxed. What's cool about this is we picked up the administrators while it was still low. And even though our net administrator is definitely negative right now with how many we have, we don't lose them unless we take them away. So you can cheat out a couple positions here. All right, with that settled, I want to peek. Hmm. This is the maximum range of this reinforcement setup. We need to fall for it. I mean, if he doesn't fall for it, maybe we can pull him to this side with the threat of the attack. I feel like even though we lose the mustering, which is a nice 10%, Oh, he is actually preparing to defend Jiangji. Okay. Okay. We're okay with that. Hmm. I think we'll start by favoring Wu generals first. We're gonna wait for... I mean, we don't have enough movement right now. We're gonna wait for next turn, get these a little bit healthier, and then... I don't know if we have enough movement to strike him, but he's also not that strong, so this would be an easy fight. This is the troubled place right now. Zheng Jiang is moving towards Sun Ben's territory. She can't get back fast enough. I think we invest over here. Power of the mercenary. Oh. Aim she comes back. We can fight that off. Okay, so I think the armies are fine. I'm gonna go for something cheap. Yeah, we have a hundred left. He didn't leave. Uh, the faction one wore off on because we used it on the. Because mm, Lingtong left, so it wore off. Yeah, that's pretty much all we can do. We can check diplomacy, I guess, and then end turn time. Very surprised all of Taltal's other vassals willing to go with peace deals here. Like, logically, it's kind of weird. I think it's like, what, 4.8? Decent. He's not going to give us that much cash. Like, we're so friendly with the vassals that... Even Taltal's kind of happy with us. This might be a cash deal. Oh, I lied. I lied. Maybe three? Yeah, Taren's even going to... 
It's like Cao Cao's vassals pay me to destroy Zhang Liao for them. Shanghai are rich. This is what happens when you run away to the mountains, not pay taxes. Three is kind of low. I think we're waiting for this to go to over 60. Yep. He will also go over 60. Yeah, let's wait on those. We can get a jump in value. Alright, so I think we're planning attack on Donghai, waiting for the ambush over here, and then we're just gonna try to wipe out Zhang Xiang. If she comes, she can pull the garrison out to fight us, which I'm not super against. She wants that fight, I'm willing to give it to her. Who leveled up? Ah, who should assignments are good. Um, this is very interesting. I think we go for this. He's probably not going to see the field for a while. He's young enough to wait, and also we can develop him using assignments. He's not very happy with us, though. 25 satisfaction. No one's really... I mean, 25 is pretty low. Level 5, that explains it. I should give him a position here. Because level 5, I think, is another tier jump where I can get stuff. But I have to fire someone, which makes it rather difficult. We can wait till Marquis hit, which should be very soon. Yeah, we can wait for that. Especially when this dips up. That's 25 points. That's our Marquis level up. So we'll get it next turn. He get the court physician job. And then these, uh, you know, ne uh, cousins will just assign vassals. But we will need an administrator slot to do it. So it's kind of weird. Uh, given that we don't have a lot. We'll try to bump up the Minister slot using the upgrade method and once we do get that. Let's try that. Anyways, let's uh, continue here. See, this will be very historical. I think we take it just to maintain this historical alliance. Okay, so Cao Cao reached level 7. Good for him. Staring contest in Hefei. Sounds good to me. They recruited another random general, yet he would not put Lu Meng on the field. Lu Meng's not willing to leave him. Five points. We don't have enough points to do the discredit faction. We can do it next turn. I feel like I don't have enough money to sell out this army, so I can't really push the attack right now. Might as well pick up night battle. Does it change anything? Their casualty? I mean, yeah, less. it makes sense. You know, lower morale means they route earlier. It doesn't matter, it's all auto wipe because it's a garrison. Wait, we're over 4,000. Shouldn't we have picked up our... Don't need these. Rank up. That's what we wanted. Four points. I'm thinking just pump up the administrator because we really need to do the vassal situation. We have a lot of armies. Yeah, we have 13 armies. Trade agreement is also great for money, especially since we have so many friends.
but we do want to set up I don't know how many I need that's the thing I don't know like how negative we are I guess we can do a quick count there's one already on it we don't get any from this we don't get any from this we're minus four so we're minus three plus two minus one there's one from reforms we might be at zero It's fine. We, we have this decent enough money to not go for that. Yeah, we were at zero. <laughs> we actually don't get a new position, but at least we know exactly what number we're at. Uh, that's fine. Um, can I shuffle someone? Because he gets a bigger bonus at rank 5 compared to some of these guys. Income, this is a better position. So we shift him over. I can't drop this value. Still net seven. It's really hard to control these values, honestly because it's cumulative rather than a snapshot. Regardless, we're going to pump up the administrator. We do want more administrator positions. You are one of our administrators, so we need that income boost for you. We'll definitely let them keep the army. So they did take Swimbun's land, which we love. You know, that's one way for us to recover some of our vassals land. We can just trade it back to him, to be honest. We can trade him like one for one or maybe even two for whatever. I don't know. I don't think he'll trade us the main capital. All right, we need to do a convert. We can demolish this for a little bit of money, right? Yeah. Because that's not going to be converted over, and this we can convert. Depends on where she goes. I'm surprised the AI actually targeted our vassal instead of us. The usual tunnel vision didn't happen. We're definitely keeping the copper mine. That's like really good for us, and this completes a province for us. We want to upgrade this. I don't know if we have enough money. Money is tight. We have a lot of money sunk over here with the staring contests with Zhang Liao. We don't have enough to pump out an army here, but they're not ready either, so it's fine. We can do it next turn. So we want to save money. This will disband once she's finished, and she's finished when we finish this off. I wonder if she's willing to trade it over for a peace deal. I know it means, I mean, look at that value. I, I know it means that she's going to be on the field for a little bit longer. Ah, she's treating it as her capital. So she can't trade that. We can go ultra treachery <laughs> because we could technically, um, because if we're going to annex Joe use faction, I wonder if we are actually going to get treachery for this because, like, how many turns has it been since he's been our vassal? We never promised him anything. There's got to be a time we can do this without incurring a large penalty. All right, so maybe we don't do like a quick deal. We can trade for this land and then immediately attack her again. Like, we peace deal. For that piece of land and then backstab her right after and then her army is stranded in no man's zone for a while so she bleeds out and then we take the capital with ease it's too dirty we're gonna stay away from that <laughs> we'll, we'll beat her properly we definitely have the force to do it it's just making our money a bit tight elsewhere which is why it's nice to have a series of free tax buildings to work with Chen Wu is also an administrator, so we should work on administrator trait, which comes down to here, which is pretty nice. We don't have to go to that side, so even if we waste some points here, we'll be fine. Who else leveled up? We have a lot of really negative... Did we lose some bonus? We lost two points of satisfaction with the Imperial Favor. Huh. This is a bit rough. Chen 
She has nothing special going on. How are we going to take care of this court? It's mainly lack of purpose. I think summoning them would do it. Which will cost a bit of money, but not unacceptable. Just trying to find a place to summon that makes more sense. We could try to sneak this. So we could summon the group here. Alright, so... The Zhu clan, not happy with us. The Gu clan, not happy with us. They're not happy with each other. What about Zhang Fei's daughter? Yeah, they can get along. That's a bit of money spent on them that I prefer to have saved, but we don't want them to be too angry with us. And we don't have a lot of mechanics right now to make people happy. I want to give him a position uh, as a vassal, and we'll try to balance him out somehow. I can, I guess I can recruit him as well. Maybe here? He's going to be relatively cheap because it's archers. One of them is the same thing. I mean, even if I want to make him a vassal, we still need some time. Alright, 700 saved. Not much money. Can we tax a little harder? I think we can. Let's take a one turn hit. We'll fix it next turn, just so that we have a little bit more money. Alright, let's um, continue after a diplomacy check. Everyone is suddenly willing to go to peace with us. Even John L. But we want John L's land. Let's base it on the satisfaction. Yeah, he's over 60, 4.2, 3.9. 6.2, and he's rich. I don't know how generous we're talking about here. Not very. Close. Oh my god. 48. Okay, we'll take that. Just jumped above 15 and it's this high? Any chance he has a lot of cash on him? No, it's not a lot. This is fine. Yeah, it's probably not going to trend over 60. The top, the top value is going to dip. Might as well get money now. Guess he's just poor. Yeah, we'll take the return to him. And then I think we do just one more that's decently high. Hansui is okay. Yeah, it's over 60 as well, so this is as good as it's going to get. I think we're good. 
Making about 9k total next turn should be enough to last us. Waiting for him to get more points. John L, please come attack us. No luck. Yep, just gonna defend Hefei like a good boy that he is. That's okay, I think that's fine. Increased relationship with uh, Lu Xun here, but he actually just got a position. I can't actually check there. He's on the field. No, he's he's wait. Is Dong on the field? I mean, historically speaking, Sun Xun and Lu Xun are close, so this would make more sense. No thanks. All right, I think we'll load up that army. We also comes to spring. We can boost him. I might do that actually. I don't want to devastate any cities. No point. He has a bad trait. That means we can reroll a trait on our faction heir. So it's always a good thing. Skill tree reset on Ling Tong, who we didn't get to pick the skill tree, but I'm not sure. If it's bad. Okay, I guess we will reroll it. This costs 2,200. It's okay. We'll buy it all. I think we want these. And then we want to work over here instead of grabbing that food one. This can go on. Alright, what did Yanyao pick up? It doesn't look any better. How bad was the one before? Uh, anyways. Okay, I mean, maybe there's more reroll potential in the future. He still has some negative traits. She's sitting pretty. We are going to send a new army out for that. We're going to go attack her directly. Walk to the border. Summon next turn, attack, disband. I actually think we can reach it because Tribuche will be the slowest unit. So no matter what we recruit, if we can reach it now, we can reach it after the recruitment. Which apparently is a lie. Um, okay. Still, we attack this. We just have to pay upkeep. Alright, we still have just... We don't have enough money to summon anyone that has retinues. Yep, unfortunately. Can't increase anyone's happiness that way. He's on the field now, so at least the lack of purpose will go away slowly. He is not on the field. And that will not go away for him. Ooh. What a great item. Um, who needs movement? Desperately. They probably need... Okay, none of them have reach. In that case, I'm going to have you lead. And I'll give you the boots. For the movement. We don't have to keep him. We don't need another Vanguard. There's going to be a chance to get more. Yeah, although they look unique, they're not really unique in the sense. Like, if we get another one of the Northern Nomadic characters, they will also have the skill tree. So I feel like we strip him. And we actually just say goodbye to him. Yeah, we can also execute, take some money, lose satisfaction. I don't think we want to do that. Oh, 
Oh, we just got the sword. Okay. Let's not waste it. Oh, we have a horse. Um, where is Yuan Yao? Oh, he did get a horse. Okay. When this comes off cooldown, I think he can grab it. So, instead of going for another trade route, I think it's time to either go for the final tax building, because it will give us a lot of good tax numbers, public order is also decent, or we go for this, which will actually save us a ton of money. Satisfaction boost for commanders. We have like one commander, I think. It's not going to be that useful. Mm, I'm thinking about this. This is probably better for the economy in the long run. The temporary salary increase, well, nice. Probably not exactly what we're looking for. Because a lot of our buildings are being idle. His lack of purpose should go down because he's on the field now. I think we're fine. I think the only place where we might want to give an item is over here to increase the trebuchet ammo situation by boosting his um, cunning a bit. Yeah, not sure we're going to give him the sword. That sword might be like our safety in terms of satisfaction loss. We don't know. If, okay, there's no extra characters. He said two. Please go away. Once he's kicked, we can annex this faction. <laughs> I hope he comes to us. That much, you know, is for sure. We we do want Lu Mont. All right, so that's the situation there. Although everyone is still willing to peace out with us, we're not exactly willing to take it. Okay. Any chance he saved up a bunch of cash and would like to pay us that in lump sum? Oh, so very close. Ah, per turn wins. Yeah, apparently, like, the complacency decrease is far outweighed just by having generals and scholars and authority. Interesting. It's, it's It feels like it's really hard to actually lose this. It's not very balanced, let's just say that. Anyhow, I think we're good. Uh, buildings, right. We got the new tax building. Everyone build that. Free cash. Like, we're decreasing support, but like, it's not actually going down. Because there's so many other factors just by having the generals that boost it. It's just a little bit too much. Alright, we don't have cash for anything else, so I'm glad we do have that tax option. John L is just very happy sitting still. All right, we got hit with people's end of uh, faction effects. This comes out in one more turn. We'll use it. So it's harvest season, I think. Lumon's still here. He has minus. Th he's minus thirty war off. Rats. We gotta wait for points. The timing. I could get another spy, but it costs a little bit too much. I don't think we need to. It's just Lu Wait, Jiang Zi left? Ditched? How much authority? Yeah, way too much authority in my opinion. 
Oh, come on. That's really bad luck with the random event. Um, I mean, no one else has reach, so it, he does have flexibility for replenishment. Jiangzi on the run. Not really nice. Now, you said you don't mind a piece. I don't mind a piece with you either. Looks like you're pretty lenient. Maybe you can just give us... Okay, not that friendly. Mm. I'm just going to take this straight up peace deal. This doesn't hurt any sort of historical so efforts here. We were never fighting Zanba. Historically, Zanba was way north. It might have to be a combination of these. I feel like it's going to lose a lot of value. 4, 25, 20. Okay, that's okay. Nice number. Uh, what is like 2,000 here? So that would be us like subtracting. 200 here. No, it's still better to go with just the per turn, actually. Sounds like a deal. Jono is really abandoned by everyone in Total's faction. Alright, this way we don't have to worry about them. We can chase them down and go attack Guangling afterwards. We'll keep the army because our income looks pretty healthy. Healthy enough to sponsor another. Oh, she's leaving the encampment to go hide in the mountains. Oh, enough to get reinforcement distance. Interesting choice. But on March and coming in as reinforcement, I feel like that's a terrible fight to pick. Anyhow, we'll wipe out her other territory. What's the minimum number of units we can bring here to win this? Or do we just... I feel like two stacks probably do it. Don't want to waste too much cash. That's a lot of cash already. Yeah, that's good enough. Now the question is, does our army in the front have night battle? Because if we have night battle, we can easily take the land and then just peace out with her. And she can't do anything to stop us. The beauty of the mercenary army. Never pay upkeep for small fights like this. Now, as for big fights, we have night battle. <laughs> okay. In that case, oh, it's a delegate win even with them, but the capture percentage is quite low. And we're gonna just kick them out of this fight first. Lost four units. Wow. I mean, there's really not much here. Anyone have any capture boost? Okay, so we'll still actually have this. I don't believe we have any capture items or horses. We don't. Oh, we do have this, the Pursuer. Shall we borrow it for a turn? To try to secure this capture, or uh, try to secure some capture, one of their generals, perhaps. She would never work for us because she's faction leader, but if we do capture her, we can choose to execute, take her axe. Which I feel is super worth. Now, where is Panjong? Capturing Jiangzi, which... Historically a great character, but in-game, poorly treated, generic advisor background. So, yeah, we are gonna borrow it. 
this is not actively being used, even though we do have the set for it. The thing is, um, we're not faction leader, prime minister, or heir right now. So we'll take that. Do we have any weapons that potentially could help us capture? Who knows, with, you know, so many mods. Maybe. Might as well check. Nope. Yep, nope. There is a capture horse. One of Tall Tall's historical horses is actually a capture horse, but we don't have that, obviously. We'll try to capture as many as we can um, in the next fight. She will probably come at, at us. Maybe she'll siege us. Should we move out? We could pop out rather than fighting in a siege situation. Like, she holds the siege, it's rather nasty. We, we basically suffer attrition for a turn for no reason. Yeah, let's do this. She can't go around us to attack, but I mean, even she does, unless she night battles it. Ah, bandits and their potential lack of night battle abilities. It's on a different class, if I remember correctly. They do have it. I think it's on the commander class. Yeah, we're fine. Yeah, so we'll keep them trapped here. Wipe them out afterwards. That went well. Um, Are we needing to... I don't think we need to recruit any unit. Um, so we do have a little bit of spare cash. We'll do the cheap stuff. So you're telling me all the buildings are level 5. Convert? Oh, perfect. Perfect amount. 450. Alright, let's drop the tax. It's kind of... Hurting our public order. Shift it back. Let everyone recover. Uh, we don't need that much money next turn. Still a quick check here. Never hurts. Yeah, we're not going to peace out with her because we have a chance to capture some other generals. It's the only chance to grab them. Maybe he has cash on hand. 700? Yes, okay, so cash on hand is going to be the better option with him. Let's do uh, 725, 735, 740. Alright, pushed it. There we go. Do you still have your items? Oh. Awesome. Um, the followers are all equipped. This has a nice five point of satisfaction on it, which kind of likes, but um, I don't know if I can afford them, even with the 3.7 amount difference. These are like 12 points. Nothing really stand out weapon wise. Uh, we don't want fervor, like fervor is not a mechanic in this. And that's like one of the worst weapons in the game. Like, Bamboo Fan might actually be the best thing here. Well, there's also a Battle Hand Axe that increases armor piercing damage. 11.3, because I think because our attitude is shifting better, he's charging us a little bit less. We can throw in that. We can throw in that. Polly can throw in that as well. 2.7. We have a little bit of cash on hand, but definitely not enough. Can we throw in military access on top of that? No, we can't overlap them. So what if we get rid of that and give you actually a silver horse, which I don't think we need. Very close. Make a payment. How low can we drop this to still have a little bit of value? I think 41 maybe? Yes. Deal. Now, the bamboo fan also not invented by this period. 
the, the skeleton structure of the fan like that did not exist in the Han. But we can use that to make someone happy. Who's who's angry with us? 26, that's decent. Guanping 34. Handang with 26 actually pretty bad. He doesn't need a fan though, that makes no sense. Yeah, take this. The Zhu clan, they're gonna get the lack of purpose reset, so they should be fine. Here, you can you can take a fan. I think we're good. Um, building wise, we're just a bit poor. It's showing us all the side buildings, which I don't think we need yet. So let's continue. I mean, they all said yes. I'm happy with this too. I'm just laughing because Liu Zhang might regret joining this alliance. It's basically the Liu clan, Liu Biao, Liu Bei, Liu Zhang, and us. Alright, we got hit by Cao Cao with the Imperial drop of favor. We have to boost it back ourselves. Everyone's jumping on Zheng Jiang because she looks really weak. Ooh. This is just a random event. This administrator lo loses money in a business deal on some silk product. The deal was generous, and so a large deposit is put down only for the silk to be stolen by bandits along the trade route. Um, unfortunate, but I don't think that's going to cause any big issues. I think satisfaction-wise, he will be fine because he's an administrator. Yeah. He's generated a couple of really random and really bad events. We got some buddies here. They're like, this was my land. I was like, I know, I know. Um, who's really dissatisfied here? I think it's because we... No, we didn't dip there. Because they... Uh, I think all the recently hired is disappearing. Right. Anyhow, um, we're going to end the episode here. I think what we need to do is find some concubine items or maybe philosopher. Something to fix this issue because we're having... Maybe we have to grant titles. It's got to be something. We got to keep people happy. We have a big court. I don't really want to ditch most of our guys. But yeah, we're finding it hard to keep them happy. So we got to think of something. Uh, Guanping, mainly I think level 5. Maybe we give him a court position. I think a title is a must at this point. Uh, or we just need to put people on the field. We just have been using money for war. Hopefully we capture a few more. And we definitely could absorb Zhou Yu any time now. After we kick Lu Meng out, which happens next turn hopefully. And then we'll grab Zhou Yu's land, which will increase our income a little bit. His characters will drop our income a little bit. We'll figure it out. We're pretty peaceful with the world. Like, the only two wars we're at, one is currently a staring contest at Hefei, which is fine. And the other is about to be over once Zhang Jiang dies. So, that's the situation. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!